Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. VTOL aircraft look like something out of a science fiction film, but they've actually been in action for decades. Designed with engines that can tilt, these aircraft don't need a runway. They direct their thrust downward for takeoff and landing, like a helicopter, and then shift their thrust back for forward flight, like a conventional plane. The first operational VTOL jet aircraft was the British Royal Air Force Harrier. It achieved high subsonic speeds in level flight. The U.S. military worked on this technology with the Brits and realized this could be the warplane that could get closest to the action. If an airstrike had to be completed quickly, the Harrier was ideal. With no need for a runway, it could operate from almost anywhere. But the original Harriers pale in comparison to the technology available to the Marine Corps today. We'll explore the crazy evolution of the first Harrier jet all the way to the more technologically advanced AV-8B Carrier II and beyond. But let's start from the beginning. The AV-8A Harrier was first developed by British aerospace manufacturer Hawker Siddeley in the late 1960s as the ground attack aircraft of the future. It was a variant of the Hawker Siddeley Harrier, explicitly designed to meet the requirements of the Marines, who needed a plane that could take off closer to the action. That's where the vertical or short takeoff and landing capabilities come in handy. They made the AV-8A Harrier the first jet able to operate from short runways and unprepared surfaces. The AV-8A was powered by a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine. That engine was designed to be vectored to direct thrust downwards or rearwards, enabling the aircraft to take off and land vertically. The aircraft had a maximum speed of around 650 miles per hour and was armed with a variety of weapons, including guns, rockets, and bombs. The AV-8A saw a steady stream of action as it was deployed during the Vietnam War and in later conflicts like the Gulf War and Afghanistan. Despite its many successes, the AV-8A had its limitations. Namely, it couldn't go very far, and the amount of weaponry it could handle was not enough. This led the U.S. to develop an upgraded version, the AV-8B Harrier II, which entered service in the 1980s with significant improvements. made possible by new and improved engine vectoring technology and fly-by-wire flight controls. Fly-by-wire, often referred to as FBW, replaces the traditional manual flight controls of an aircraft with an electronic interface. The pilot's inputs are transmitted to the aircraft's control surfaces through a computer, which interprets and processes the input signals and sends the appropriate commands to the control surfaces. Furthermore, the AV-8B's ability to land vertically with pinpoint accuracy has made it an invaluable asset for a variety of military operations. It has helped establish the Harrier family of aircraft as one of the most versatile and effective ground attack platforms in history. The first flight ever in a Harrier is like, 
you don't really remember it because it's so fast. I mean, you take off and like your brain is back behind you on the runway. It is really exciting. Marine Captain John Standard describes the thrill and the responsibility that comes with flying a Harrier jet. He, like all men and women who pilot VTOL aircraft, goes through intense specialized training. Classroom instruction is complemented by simulator training and further supported by many, many flight hours. Before each of those flights, a Harrier pilot will conduct an inspection of the aircraft to ensure it is in proper working order and ready to go. The weapons load is surveyed. The missiles and rockets are carefully positioned on weapons racks located on the underside of the Harrier's fuselage and wings. These racks are designed to securely hold the weapons in place and ensure the weapons are properly aligned for release. After the weapons are loaded onto the jet, they are electronically linked to the Harrier's onboard computer system, which provides the pilot with information on their status and configuration. The pilot can then select and release weapons as needed during the mission. To fire a weapon on a Harrier, the pilot first selects the desired one from a set of controls on the instrument panel. The aim is assisted by a combination of the aircraft's targeting systems, which can include radar, laser rangefinders, and electro-optical sensors. Once the weapon is aimed, the pilot can fire it using a set of trigger buttons on the aircraft's joystick or throttle. The Harrier's weapon systems are typically integrated with the aircraft's computerized flight controls. That means the pilot can adjust the aircraft's speed, altitude, and flight path while firing allowing the pilot to maintain situational awareness and adjust the aircraft's position to optimize the effectiveness of the weapon. Taking off in a Harrier is an intense yet short experience. The pilot taking off from the deck of the USS Bonham Richard uses the aircraft's unique thrust vectoring technology to accelerate and then lift off over the ocean waves. When it's time to land, the pilot uses the aircraft's vectored thrust technology to slow down and hover in place suddenly. Then the aircraft can descend vertically back onto the ship. Pilots have said that despite the plethora of tech assistance on board, the Harrier is a difficult aircraft to fly. Harriers serving the Marines have a higher accident rate than other types of aircraft. And landings don't always go smoothly. On June 7, 2014, the front-leaning gear on the Harrier jet piloted by U.S. Marine Corps Captain William Mahoney failed. I took off, and uh, as I was climbing away from the deck, I uh, put my gear up. I realized I had a gear malfunction, so I immediately pulled the power back, slowed the aircraft down so I wouldn't overspeed the landing gear, and then uh, went just above the ship at about 2,000 feet. As Captain Mahoney hovered by himself, he was in constant contact with the ship. Engineers worked out the best way to land the plane with its front gear missing was to put a sort of pedestal or stool on deck. With impeccable precision, Captain Mahoney slowly lowered the plane down onto the stool.
In the worst case scenario, Mahoney could have ejected from the plane over the ocean, but the plane would have been a total loss. The cost of a Harrier jet ranges from around $15 million to $30 million. Maintaining these pricey jets is important. These aircraft are complex machines with advanced technology and multiple systems that require regular checks to ensure their safe and efficient operation. Can lead to malfunctions, breakdowns, and yes, accidents. If properly cared for, the lifespan of Harrier jets can be extended. That's important, as these expensive assets represent a significant investment for governments and militaries. Of course, the U.S. military is always looking toward the future. And despite its immense capabilities, the government is in the process of phasing out Harriers and replacing them with the newer F-35B Lightning II. Why the change? Well, the F-35B is also a VTOL aircraft, but overall has more advanced capabilities and offers increased range and speed. Compared to a Harrier jet, an F-35B is able to perform a wider range of missions, including air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat, electronic warfare, and intelligence gathering. The U.S. Marine Corps began phasing out the AV-8B in 2017, and the plan is to replace the entire fleet with F-35B Lightning II aircraft by 2025. While no one knows what exactly the future holds, VTOL aircraft will certainly continue to be an important tool in the U.S. military's arsenal. When it was first introduced, the Harrier class of jets transformed modern warfare. No longer did jets need a long runway to take off and defend or attack a territory. They just required a small platform, commonly a warship's deck, to begin their mission with vertical takeoff and undergo intense preparation. So that they could operate these expensive aircraft from a wide range of locations and platforms. The Harrier jet's impressive capabilities come with an impressive price tag. And expensive is an understatement. However, despite the domination of the skies, the Harrier AV-8B is an aging aircraft that ultimately has been in service since the 1980s. The F-35B Lightning II, a more advanced and capable VTOL fighter jet, is now in the spotlight. It's better suited to the challenges of ever-evolving modern warfare. If its technology is no longer sufficient to meet the demands of modern warfare, then its days are numbered. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.